So from a pageant princess to philanthropist, Shante Cares Foundation was born growing up in the pageant world. Founder and managing director Shante Yanki says she saw the importance of using a platform for more than self-indulgence, but for making a difference. Over the years, she has been involved in collaborative humanitarian projects during her tenure as Miss S18 and Miss Teen Universe. My colleague, as you know her, Shante Yankees, uh, joins us now for more. A very good evening to you and um, well done on your philanthropic work. I know it's been going on for quite a while. Yeah. So tell me about the, how, did, how, how was the seed born? Firstly, thank you very much for having me on the show tonight. Thank you for the opportunity and be, being able to talk more about Shante's foundation. Um, I feel I've been in the pageant world growing up my whole life. It's something that my mom enrolled me into um, as a self-confidence and a self-building um, sort of activity. Mm -hmm. And with that, I saw the importance of actually having a platform, uh, number one. Number two, actually having influence. How old were you, by the way, when you first started? Um, my first pageant I think I did was, I was seven, um, and it was an after-school care um, pageant. It was a fundraising pageant, mm -hmm. and that's how I got into pageants. So yeah, I saw the importance of actually making a difference with the platform that you do have. Um, and somewhat making it look cool, making it, you know, something that I, you I'm want to do. I'm curious about the name. Why Shante Cares? Um, a lot of people tell me um, that I'm a very caring person, um, which for me I don't really see. But I think that's more or less um, where the name came from, that, you know, Shante, you actually care, apart from how people usually view you of what mm -hmm. we see on TV or what we see on social media. And, of course, it was pink. Um, I had an aunt who passed away from breast cancer. Um, so that was where we got the inspiration for the colour. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and I'm curious about that, as you say, the public persona. Does that aid you or impede you in trying to do genuine philanthropic work? Do, do people judge you one way or the other in I doing think, that? Yeah, I think in the beginning, um, you know, before people kind of know you, at bird's eye view, they'd think that I'd be doing it just for social media. Mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of people would be like, why do, you, why do you post the work that you do? When you go to a home, when you go to a shelter, why do you take videos of the bread that you're buying? Why do you, you post that you're paying for someone's school fees? And I'm like, why not? Um, you know, it's something that I'm proud of doing. It's something that fulfills me. It's something mm. that makes me happy. Um, when you go out and you get a beautiful outfit or you want to go to the club, you post it. Um, you know, that's something and that fulfills you. And how else you. would you raise awareness, I suppose, of, exactly. of the work that you're doing exactly. and maybe to attract other projects? I'm thinking that's, that's probably your rationale as well. Not only that, the thing is, um, Shantae Cares is 100% self-funded. And I think that was also another thing that pushed me in wanting to do it because I had all these initiatives that I was doing and I was collaborating with companies. But when it came to the funding and when it came to actually putting money or putting resources down, then no one wants to be a part of it. Mm. So I thought, you know what, this is just something that I want to do. It's something that I'm so involved in and I'm going to do it myself. And I suppose people also don't understand the difficulties of raising funds, especially for um, when something is for a philanthropic yeah. effort as opposed to something that build somebody else's image? 100% to be so. And, you know, I found sometimes growing up, I just felt like I wanted someone to believe in me. I wanted a miracle to happen. And I thought, you know, if I'm in a position to be able to believe in one person and to help them um, somewhat believe in themselves and for that miracle to happen in their lives, then why not contribute so in whatever way I can? more about some of these projects. Who are you working with? Okay. How do you choose them? Okay, so um, initially before I actually established um, Shantae Cares Foundation legally, I had been collaborating with different foundations, different organizations and different drives. Um, so this was one of the drives that I collaborated with, with uh, Puentle Foundation. They're based in Pretoria. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, I'd heard about the work that Shanice had been doing and she told me that um, you know, there were some there were some school kids here. Yes, that's for Ciso. Um There were some school kids here who who didn't have school shoes, um, who didn't have basic pens, pencils. Um, so initially, I started a backpack challenge, which I call the backpack challenge, and I uh, challenged all my people or all my followers on social media um, to contribute and do the same. Whether it was um, contribute towards um, buying the school shoes or buying uh, backpacks, and with that being said, we had about thirty. Um, school packs that we could donate 
um, to the school children. So initially we had 10, I contributed 10, and then I had another person match five, another person match five, oh, no. another person match So ten. how responsive are people? I mean, going back to that whole image thing, uh, Miss Glam, you look so <laughs> beautiful and so polished. Why don't you just buy all the backpacks? Um, well, I did. That's what I did. Mm. But, but I'm, I'm just saying responsiveness, if you, when you challenge people and say, come, let's do this together. Um, you find, I've noticed a lot of people don't like putting down money. Mm. Um, and for me, that makes complete sense. That's why most of my my challenges when I do challenge people are come shop with me. You can come buy the stuff yourself or I can give you a list of whatever it needs to be um, bought. You can buy the stuff and then drop it off. Um, so I'm finding now more and more that they, I am getting a good response specifically from young people and for them to see the importance of giving back. And how, that how do you things choose can't be about what is yourself. worthy for what resonates with you but also where you really feel you're making a difference? Um, it, it's hard to say. Um, there are a lot of things that come up, but I think I just, I sort of just follow my heart mm. um, and I see where I can contribute genuinely. I never want to be a part of something just for namesake. Um, and a lot of the schools that I visit or when I'm working with children, um, I like to talk to the kids. I like to hear their dreams and their aspirations. And I love specifically working with young girls. I think um, we don't necessarily have the role models that we did um, when I grew up. And if we did, we go onto social media for the wrong reasons. We don't necessarily look up to people because we want to be like them, but just to kind of see the lifestyle that we're living. Mm -hmm. um, so I also try... Um, you know, talk to the young girls, kind of inspire them, ask them their dreams. And you hear some of these kids, um, some of the young girls, they say, you know, I want to be this and I want to be this, but I don't believe in myself. Or I believe that the background that I currently um, have is not going to allow me to do that. So that also um, pushes me specifically in, in the drives that I do choose okay. and the collaborations that I do choose in being able to connect with the young uh, woman child. So let's talk about Mandela Day, let's talk about Africa Day. What have you done in some of those uh, milestones? Okay, so um, Africa Day, um, this is one that I specifically love. Most of the schools that we visit on Africa Day um, encourage the kids to dress up um, in, in African regalia, whether it's whether you're Koso, Zulu, or whether you're from a different country. So I really love that and being able to speak to the children to ask them, you know, what the importance of Africa Day is. Do they know what it means? Mm -hmm. um, unity is something that, that they know. So at a young age, that's something very important mm -hmm. for me. Um, so Africa Day last year, we did a uh, feeding scheme in winter where we fed about 5,000 um, school children in some of the designated schools. And this year we did the same. And our aim this year was to, in collaboration with um, Sue Lubb, she's a human rights activist based in the South, um, our aim this year was to feed over one, 100,000 school kids. Currently we're on 58,000. Um, so I fund some of those um, soup schemes that we do. And you know, for many of the children that we do visit, that's the first and the only meal that they have. So we specifically target winter because it's cold and um, yeah. a lot of the kids obviously are writing exams. Um, Mandela Day, of course, Mandela is all about paying it forward. It's not just 67 minutes on Mandela Day, but all year round. Um, so this year I chose to participate with a children's shelter, also based in the South. And we also had some sponsors on board, a face painting. Um, they came and blew up um, some balloons for the kids and we hosted a picnic at the shelter for some of the kids and of course I was also able to speak to um, some of the young girls and I was also jumping on the trampoline. I saw that. <laughs> in, a workout in. in your heels. <laughs> and this was last year, this was at the home for the mentally challenged um, in the south um, and um, yeah we also went to um, have a lunch with them and we also did some sort of um, revamp and building uh, for them just to kind of make the home look a little bit better. Um, this is Nelson, his name is also Nelson. Um, and he inspired me because he is mentally disabled, but every time I see him and every time we go back to the home, he's always asking me, like, what have you been up to? What are you doing? Um, and he wants to be a DJ. And he's someone that inspires me so much. He knows of his, his disability and he's like, you know what, I'm not going to let that uh, be something that, that inhibits me from doing all the things that I want to do and for dreaming. Right, so if I was a genie and I was popping up and I said, what's your wish list for the next year? <laughs> um, okay, I don't have one for the next year, but... For the next maybe 10 or 20 years, I would really, really, really love to be instrumental in the eradication of pit toilets and pit latrines. There have been too many people that have died. We saw uh, Michael Gomape, of course, uh, that case is still going on. And over 3,000 schools in South Africa are still subject to having pit latrines. It's absolutely unacceptable. That's almost 4,000 people. So I'd love to be involved in that. I'd love to somehow uh, be a part of building a library. 
um, as well as building a university one day and a hospital. That, that's my wish list for the next 10 to 50 years or so. I'm going to see about that magic <laughs> wand that I have hidden behind me. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Shantay. you so I'm much for the opportunity you. and letting me talk about trying to take his foundation. I'm wishing evening. you all the best. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, my colleague, philanthropist and founder of Shantae Cares Foundation, Shantae Yankees.